I am joined by a good friend of mine, Vic Mattis. You can catch him at Victorino Mattis online on Twitter X. But he, along with Mary Catherine Ham, have one of the finest podcasts besides my own at uh, Getting Hammered. And he joins us now. And I just have to tell the audience, uh, Vic, that week in and week out, when I get you set up for your weekly visits with you, I kept asking you whether or not you had joined Team Optimism yet. And I never did get you fully on board with Team Optimism. Um, Team Optimism feels pretty good now, doesn't it? Uh, It does. Uh, If I go back to uh, even when things were... You know, pretty good, Dwayne, uh, right before the election. You asked me, am I there yet? I have to tell you, even on election night, uh, you know, it looked like Trump was going to win Georgia. Trump is going to win North Carolina. And I'm looking at that map. I'm like, well, she's still got the blue wall. You know, she's still going to win because she's going to get she could do Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. And I couldn't imagine that uh, Trump was going to just sweep that. And uh, not only that, but the states out west and, of course, the popular and it have, vote. And it being called that night. Oh, and yeah. no, and not no. delayed, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And uh, and talking about optimism, uh, I, my wife and I, we were just in New York uh, City uh, over the weekend. And, you know, there's a huge crowd outside of Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue. Uh, no protesters, though. They were all people who were ogling tourists, people taking pictures. Uh, and then, of course, uh, later on uh, Saturday night, there was a big UFC fight at Madison Square Garden. Yep. And Trump, of course, and his crew uh, his potential cabinet uh, were all there, uh, and you had people, you know, wandering around. There was a father and son in our train going back uh, who went to the UFC fight. They had the shirts, and they were saying there are people out there with MAGA hats in Manhattan, uh, and that's something that I think was unthinkable, uh, you know, not too long ago. And I think it's just because, as you've spoken about and Hugh has spoken about, Trump has won, you know, uh, more support than he he he's made gains uh, from coast to coast. Uh, including in New York. I was talking about this with my wife last night. The one thing that Trump has done, and again, you can like him or hate him. I don't care. It's a different argument. The one thing that Donald Trump has done is he's made Republicans cool again. All the NFL players are doing the Trump dance in the end zone now, right? I mean, you're, you are you saw the, uh, I don't remember the name of the, the guy, the UFC fighter that won Saturday night, but... Uh, he he had this wicked round kick to the gut and knocked the guy out. And when he gets his he gets his his belt, he starts doing the Trump dance. It's it's pretty remarkable the impact that Donald Trump has had on the culture. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's doing it. They're doing it at the NFL level, at the college football level, and various other sports. It's uh you know it, it, it's quite remarkable. And that is the thing that people are talking about is that. People were uh, a lot more uh, timid or even intimidated into not uh, expressing support for for Trump, certainly in uh, 2016, but also obviously in 2020. Uh, And you're seeing less of that. And that's also in the face of being told that uh, this would be potentially the last election. They're going to round up, you know, the journalists and the historians, apparently, according to Michael Bischloss. And then, uh, you know, in addition to that, you know, fascism, the end of democracy. And of course, just every other possible celebrity coming up on stage with uh, Kamala Harris to say, hey, you know, we're doing it. Shouldn't you, too? And, you know, the other side, Trump's side was like, wait a minute. No, you know, we're not just going to just nod there and say, yeah, you're right, but rather come out. And so you had actors. I think Zachary Levi was one that surprised me yep. because, you know, he says, you know, they're out there in Hollywood and now it's, the, it's now or never. If you want to, you know, make your opinion known, you don't have to. But at the same time, you don't, don't you just don't have to. Just, there Justine Bateman has come out recently. Uh, you know, the Family Ties uh, yes. teen star. She's she's come out and is kind of red pilled, yeah. which is kind of fun to see. Now you were talking and about she New York. A, right? She has a wonderful, uh, you know, she has a wonderful cameo, by the way, Dwayne, in uh, Arrested Development. Uh, as, oh as, yes, as, as not, yes, and, and just if you have to look her up in that, she's really great. Absolutely. Um, as long as we're talking about New York and what happened over the weekend, you being up there, we got to talk about the governor because I was making this case that I don't think the left has quite gotten it yet. They still have a long way to go in the wilderness before they kind of have their, 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 you know, soul searching moment and figure out what they've got to do to win again. Uh, Kathy Hochul hold, uh, held a press conference over the weekend or last Friday. 
And she's talking about this um, this uh, tax, this fee, this congestion fee in uh, in New York City that she's going to impose. The original plan was to impose a fifteen dollar a day fee to use the the Empire State's highways and byways. But upon further review, she's going to drop it to nine dollars, thus saving the taxpayers of. New York, uh, thousands of dollars a year, potentially, a 40% savings. Uh, let's play cut number 13. Of for... During this process, from day one, I have made affordability for New York families a top priority. I always have, and I always will, fight to put more money in the pockets of everyday New Yorkers. That's why back in June, I stood up on behalf of hardworking families and simply said no. No to a new $15 congestion toll that at that particular time was just too much. Too many people were worrying about high costs, groceries, rent, childcare. These are real challenges for our families. And launching a toll that high really would have hurt a working mom or working dad trying to make ends meet, especially someone driving in from a transportation desert or far from outside the center of the city. As governor, it is my job to make decisions that take into account the needs of all working New Yorkers. So I made the decision to put the congestion pricing program on pause while we devise a different path forward. State law requires that congestion pricing simulta- simultaneously raise money for the MTA and drive down traffic congestion. These are important priorities. But I believe that New- no New Yorker should have to pay a penny more than absolutely necessary to achieve these goals. And $15 was too much. And I'm proud to announce We have found a path to fund the MTA, reduce congestion, and keep millions of dollars in the pockets of our commuters. Under this plan, the MTA will implement a congestion pricing plan with a reduced daytime toll of $9 beginning in January. You heard that correctly. It was $15 before, and now it is $9. That is a 40% reduction. Okay, stop right there. Vic Mattis, <laughs> you, do you know what yeah. the current pricing is for the congestion fee today? Yeah, uh, I'm going to guess it's uh, about $9 less than that. Is that right? It's <laughs> zero. Zero dollars right now. See, do you remember Gallagher, the watermelon smashing comedian back in the 80s and 90s, did the Showtime specials? He did a running gag on this about women saving you money buying stuff because it was on sale. I've seen this bit before, right? I mean, what yeah. is this nonsense? Yeah, you know, I mean, they might as well have proposed a $100 congestion fee, and then she could say, I've got great news for you. I'm going to only charge you 50 you know, and then it'll be like, oh, that's wonderful. Uh, no, it's as perceptive as uh, she's always been when you think about uh, – Governor Hochul in the white dress and, uh, next to the grill. You know, I mean, she's really connecting with the voters here. Uh, it's it's a problem with, you know, they're losing uh, the city of New York and the state. Uh, they're losing people. People are leaving that state. We know this. You and I know this. We talk about this. They're going to places like Florida and Texas and other places south. Uh, this is not a way to keep and retain those people who have decided they still want to have to either, you know, work somewhere within the city or they're commuting from Connecticut or New Jersey, uh, it's not great. And uh, something tells me uh, there's going to be a lot of pushback for this, as there should be. And again, uh, you think about uh, New York in the last election, uh, it was not a blowout uh, relative to uh, prior elections for a Democrat over a Republican. I mean, she needs to, she barely herself uh, survived a a race against Lee Zeldin. Uh, So uh, somebody's going to have to tell her this is a bad idea. She's going to have to, like many Democrats, just uh, learn the hard way. It's just, it was just incredible. Um, so uh, last question, where do you come down on the overall nature of the Trump picks? 
look, if he's nominated 25 thus far, which is about the number that, that he's come up with, uh, conservatives are going to find one, two, three, four, maybe five of them they really don't like a lot. That's that's going to be pretty typical. But of the 25, are, are you in the camp that we're better off than you, we thought it would be or about what we thought it would be or worse off than what you thought? Well, in terms of numbers, we have a lot of, I think, uh, the, the Trump administration has a lot of great picks. Uh, I just heard Brendan Carr, for example, for, you know, FCC chair. And he, great he's pick. there. So, so that's I think that's a great I think that's a great pick. And obviously, I think Marco Rubio is, is, is a great pick. National Security Advisor. You mean, Mike you mean that extremist, oh. the, the extremist yeah. that Scott Pelley complained about on 60 Minutes? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, they just they still can't hold back. They still don't get it. Fine, they continue to get. Uh, if they, they continue not to get it, then uh, it, it's a bonus for Republicans. Uh, yeah, you're going to have some bad picks, but you know, as my colleague Matt Continetti mentioned in his uh, Friday column in the Free Beacon, every administration, incoming Obama and and and, and Bush and prior administrations, you're going to have picks that don't go over well, and a number of those picks don't even make it to confirmation. So it's not a right. surprise. Everybody's talking, obviously, about Matt Gates as AG. That might not even make it. Uh, but you throw it all in there, uh, and in the grand scheme of things, uh, I think there's more good than bad, definitely.